Fifteen years ago, a Taylor Energy oil platform toppled over, causing the longest-running oil leak in U.S. history. Investigative reporter David Hammer has been following the story for years, and after visiting the site by plane last month, he now brings us the first coverage of the Coast Guard's attempt to cap the leak. We're on. Captain Rick Januzzi has taken this 12-mile trip off the mouth of the Mississippi River to the Taylor Energy oil spill many times over the last 15 years. I've been out here over 100 times. <laughs> Usually, when the winds are strong and seas are rough, the oil evaporates quickly. Not this time. Even in these 5 to 10-foot seas, we can see the rainbow sheen, we can smell the oil, and now for the first time since 2013, there are crews out here putting a containment dome down 450 feet below the surface to try to collect the oil. Ever since Hurricane Ivan caused a mudslide in September 2004 and knocked over Taylor Energy's platform, oil has been leaking from under the toppled metal structure. Last month, I viewed it from the air. This week, I returned by boat with a CBS News crew and Florida State oceanographer Ian McDonald to capture the first images of a Coast Guard contractor trying to cap the longest continuous offshore oil spill in U.S. history. I'm really glad, you know, 15 years on, that the government has finally said, wait a minute, we're convinced by the data, we're going to take charge of this, we're going to do our level best to plug this thing up. But Taylor Energy has tried to block these new efforts to contain the oil. Taylor President Will Piku says the company has spent almost half a billion dollars doing all it can safely do to stop the leak and is ready to spend more. But pulled back when a government review in 2013 warned that more work on the seafloor could make things worse. You're going to stir it up, you're going to release that oil into the water column, and you will create a more adverse component to the water column, to the environment. In the last week, while the crews have been working at the site, Taylor's own reports of the spill rate have increased 20 or 30 fold. In a statement, the company said, quote, the Coast Guard is acting recklessly and with unprecedented secrecy. But the Coast Guard sent us a statement saying work crews haven't seen any increased sheening. Besides, McDonald says stirring up the mudslide is not the problem here. So that's not what's creating this oil spill. What's creating this oil spill is flow from the reservoirs going up through the damaged piping and coming out at the base of the platform as it lies on the bottom. For more than a decade, Taylor and the government agreed the leak was minor, only about 10 gallons a day. McDonald estimates it's more like 4,000 gallons a day, and some scientists have said it's even larger. Late last year, the Coast Guard suddenly started accepting those figures. Well, a gallon of oil, you know, at a thin layer, a micron thick layer, covers about a football field. And, you know, we've got many, many, many football fields. How did they look at that and say, well, that's only 10 gallons, and why did the Coast Guard believe them? McDonald was the first scientist to prove that BP was vastly underreporting the size of its massive oil spill in 2010. He questions the Coast Guard's ongoing policy of relying on the oil companies to report their own spills accurately. It's troubling to me that, you know, sometimes the Coast Guard does not make use of the kinds of scientific evidence that would be available to it. At the same time, McDonald says national news reports comparing the Taylor spill to the Deepwater Horizon disaster aren't helpful either. And I don't think that serves the public well. I think we should, you know, we should be very careful in how we evaluate this. We should be conservative. That doesn't mean that we should pretend that it's only 10 gallons a day, but, you know, let's not call this the second uh, Deepwater Horizon when it's not. David Hammer, Eyewitness News. Coast Guard spokesman Stephen Lehman said divers and robotic submarines are still assessing the site. Once they place the dome over the leak, the Coast Guard plans to start calculating the rate of the spill at its source.